The general consensus is that sequels tend to be worse than the original, and there is a very good reason that cliché exists. But sometimes, once in a blue moon, bad films get sequels that actually turn out good. Like, not just a slight improvement, but an actually honest-to-goodness, well-made, entertaining film. Here are five good sequels to bad first installments. The Collector had very promising potential for a horror film. A serial killer breaks into people's houses and sets up deadly sadistic booby traps for the tenants? Good premise! But the big issue I have with the first film is its style, which comes across as very showy and in your face when it simply wasn't needed. On top of that, I thought the first film's pacing was simply dreadful. However, the film's sequel, The Collection? Totally different story. The pacing is tighter, the booby traps felt more elaborate and creative, the direction is more focused, and the ending is incredible. The difference between the films is night and day, and I do kinda wish they'd give this franchise another go, because based on this film alone, you can tell there's potential for some really twisted, splatter film fun to be had here. While the first Purge isn't a bad film per se, it does waste a promising potential on being a simple home invasion film. It kinda comes across more like the filmmakers wanted to have a home invasion film with an overly convoluted explanation for why the homeowners don't simply call the police. The Purge Anarchy though, while far from a perfect film, learned from the pitfalls of its predecessor and gave the audience what they wanted. What the Purge would be like on the actual streets. There is a lot of decent world building here. The action is done well, there's a lot of creatively creepy imagery, and it actually takes advantage of its premise. It's not great. Nobody is ever going to mistake this for a great film. But in my opinion, it does just enough that I would consider this a good film worth checking out. I don't need to explain why the Transformers movies are bad, do I? Because they're bad. I wasn't even a huge fan of the first film. I just found it kind of loud and obnoxious and not entertaining. Bumblebee shows us the potential that these films had from the beginning if only they'd gotten someone who knew how to handle the material, like director Travis Knight and screenwriter Christina Hodson. Instead of the focus on joyless, soul-sucking robot fights that go on way too long, this film's focus is on the heartwarming relationship between Charlie and B. It also helps that this film's runtime isn't bloated well past its breaking point. Oh, and the characters in this film aren't obnoxious, that kinda helps too. Extremely entertaining, sweet, and surprisingly funny, Bumblebee was the Transformers film that fans deserved, but unfortunately probably came too late. In fact, this film was so good and entertaining, I'm curious as to what else the writer has written. Huh. Weirdly, I have nothing to say to that. I wasn't really a fan of the first three Fast and Furious films, and yes, that would include the first one. To me, the plots just felt kinda generic with nothing to help them stand out, except the street racing gimmick. The first film is literally the plot of Point Break, just with cars instead of surfing and with more sympathetic criminals. However, starting with the fifth film, Fast Five, the franchise completely retooled itself, and in my opinion, it did so for the better. Each film seems to be trying to top itself for how ridiculous and insane they can make both the premise of each film, as well as insane over-the-top stunts. And it does so with the permanent wink directed at the audience that's quite infectiously enjoyable. And given how this franchise has only gotten more popular the more ridiculous they've gotten, I can honestly say that I'm looking forward to see what this franchise has in store next. It's kind of difficult for me to explain why the first Rugrats movie doesn't work. There are some moments of creativity, but overall the film just kinda has this dark undercurrent that doesn't really feel like Rugrats. It even just kind of looks unappealing in a way that I can't really describe. The sequel on the other hand, Rugrats in Paris, does not have either of these problems. 
While the story itself is more mature and has more drama than your typical Rugrats episode in order to justify its feature length runtime, it does so without sacrificing what made the Rugrats so great in the first place. The animation is bright and colorful, the characters are all well written, it's funny, and the climax is a lot of fun. Rugrats in Paris is exactly what a film based on a children's cartoon should be. An entertaining treat for both fans and newcomers alike. And that's it. Those are five good sequels to bad films. If you know of any sequels that you think were better than their predecessor, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. I'm curious to hear what you come up with. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and share. Links to all my social media are in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.